Green. Join the Labour Party. I wouldn't have done this for anyone else. Arif Shah, I have joined Pam Arnold. I will receive my Labour partnership, which I only took up to vote for Jeremy. This is Eliane Green. Now, Eliane actually is quite notorious these days because it was her Palestine Live Facebook group that I found Jeremy Corbyn inside. I have joined the Labour Party. She only joined for Jeremy Corbyn. This is political Belkraft or all. This is a rabidly racist site. I mean, it's, it's vile. It's the kind of thing you just you open it up and it is, it, it hates everybody that is not white. I joined. JFK killed after shutting down Rothschild's Federal Reserve. In other words, we did it. Okay. <laughs> I have seen, I don't actually think that, I, that there is a single thing that has happened in the world over the last 130 years that I have not seen blamed on Rothschild and Zionism. So if there is any one here called Rothschild, my word, you've been busy. I mean, that's multitasking. This is now true labour once more. I've just joined the Labour Party. Will you? Now, this is Holocaust in our white. Jewish water, she's dealing with Holocaust. But that's not really what I want to point out here. What I want to point out is the website it's come from. It's come from a website called whiteresistor.com. Now, does that really sound like a Labour voter should be sitting in a website sharing with her friends a website called whiteresistor.com because we all know what's inside that website, don't we? That is a neo-Nazi white supremacist site, but this is somebody else who joined the Labour Party for Jeremy Corbyn. You know what? I just joined the Labour Party. Linking 9-11 truth to the Israel Palace. Yeah, but just... About 30 years after we killed Kennedy, we went to the towers. Um, this actually is veteranstoday.com. It's another rapidly racist website. These are all people that join the Labour Party for Jeremy Corbyn. The argument isn't that Labour was anti Semitic or, or was a normal party, and then Corbyn came in, and then we started to complain about it because Corbyn had taken power. And we wanted to, to stifle him because of his support for the Palestinian cause. The truth was that there was, and it's almost an entryist project, where people who were disenfranchised, who didn't really belong in the Labour Party, who are racist, joined the party because they identified with some of Jeremy Corbyn's causes. That's what happened. This is, and this is Pam, I won't even, it's too small to read, she is a baby Nazi. She, she hangs around with um, Alison Chavos and um, Villa Latsmon, these are her friends. Her friends are of the right, not of the left. But, <laughs> oh um, what I've always tried to do I, I try to specify, I try to be accurate, because it's no good getting involved in just hurling abuse. Okay, you say, oh, they're all anti-Semites. Okay, well, no, they're not. Oh, every, everybody who's an anti-Zionist is an anti-Semite. Well, there were some good guys who have just been led astray. You know, not everybody who's standing there with the Palestinian flag is a bad guy. Some of them just, have just got it wrong, they're friends, they're, they're with their groups, they're with their friends. They're, they're not telling the truth, but that doesn't make them evil. Okay? So what I, what I like to do, I like to quantify, I want to understand exactly what's taking place. Now what I started to do is I started to capture um, demonstrations. Okay, I started to say, okay, there's this group of people, I've got them, see how many I can identify, and then see if I can quantify the 
level of anti-Semitism within the group. How many of these people share hardcore anti-Semitic material? And it's important to understand. What I did, I wanted to deflect from accusations that I was dealing just with criticism of Israel. Okay, because if you're, if you're digging up an argument, you want to make sure that you can, it withstands people having a guy. So, I discounted everything to do with the conflict. It doesn't matter to me if they called Israel the Nazis. I didn't count it. If they're lying about the genocide or the ethnic cleansing, didn't count that either. The only thing that I went for were people who were sharing neo-Nazi material, Holocaust denial, or Rothschild conspiracy. Okay? In other words, they'd left Israel and they'd started looking at Israel as a global Jew. Those are the only people I counted. And the first protest was when Billy came to town. So I went to Downing Street with my camera. And I went back and I went online and I looked for all of these people and I was part of their groups. So I was going through the, the way they're really helpful sometimes. They tag themselves into photos. It's really good. Um, go on. And these, these were the early days. 42% of the people who were demonstrating had shared hardcore anti Semitic material. I think that's 40 out of 100. So, I'm looking at this sea of people demonstrating against the Israeli state, and 40 or 4 out of every 10 are anti Semites. I mean, that's horrific. <clears throat> Let me come up, up here. Again, uh, I was helped by the fact that they liked to take each other. I got 61, which is about 50, but there were about 120 there. So, I got half of them, which is Pretty good. We've got half of them, and this time we're 50 50. When you think about that, you've got people walking in, this was the Shalom Festival, so you've got people walking into the festival and they're being heckled and they're being insulted and they're being called vile names. By whom? How is it that in 2016, Jewish people? who are going into a festival, all their supporters, who are going into a festival in Edinburgh, in Scotland, are being heckled publicly in the street by a bunch of anti-Semites, and the police just stand and watch. Yeah. So on the back of this, I produced a report um, highlighting the levels of anti-Semitism within the Scottish Palestine Solidarity Campaign. Because it wasn't just one event, I, I did another one, and it was the same results. And I found, and this is the issue, and this is where it's important to understand. Not everybody who's sitting at home in support of the Palestinians is an anti Semite. Okay? A lot of them have just seen a news broadcast, don't understand the history. Look, you show somebody a picture of a dead child or a dead baby, you want to support those people. You, know, you, don't, you can't go into, oh, by the way, you've got to go to university for four, year, for four years to understand the context of that photograph. That's not the way life works. People make their decisions very, very quickly. And the Israelis are, and do have, the upper hand. And the ones who are suffering the most are the Palestinians. Forget for a minute who's to blame, that doesn't really matter. From a question, especially in today's social media world, of how things look, we start in a bad position. Even if I believe that Israel is fully justified, right 90% of the time, even if I believe that, I accept the fact that it's a, it, you know, it's, it, we have the difficult sell. <coughs> because they have the pictures, they have the pictures. And they put them out all the time. Half of them are from Syria, but they still put them out all the time anyway. So, one. I'm only with the time, by the way. Uh, give me a microphone, I'm going to stop. Just take your time, David. Okay. I don't know, I how, many, leave, I I, I don't know how many slides you've got. I don't know either. We'll find out. <laughs> what I did, I looked at the Facebook group, okay? 
And this is where I started to become, because I've been doing this now for a while, and I was getting better at what it is, again, better at what it is I was doing. In the sense that I had a better understanding. So I started to try to narrow it down a bit. I said, well, hang on a minute. Some of those people are Jewish. If 50% of the people are anti-Semites, what about the Jews? Why have I counted them? They're not going to be anti-Semitic. I'm not going to find Jews pushing Holocaust denial, or Jews, for the most part, or Jews pushing Rothschild conspiracy. That I'm including them at all in the equation is, is a mistake. So I started to remove them. Now this, this took place in, in Facebook Live. The number of total posters that were identified over two, this is all the posts that took place in Palestine Live over a two week period. This is the group that Jeremy Corbyn was found inside. He doesn't like me very much. 53% um, of the posters, of the posters who posted inside that group shared hardcore anti-Semitism. Sixty-four percent of the posts. Now understand this, because it, there's an issue here. When I counted the number of people, it was fifty-three percent. When I counted the amount of activity, it was sixty-four percent. And there's an underlying message here. Then I took out the Jews, and it went up to fifty-eight percent. From 53 to 58, so 58% of the posters, once the Jews have been taken out, who were posting inside that group over that two week period, shared hardcore anti Semitism. And when I took out the Jews, we hit 73%. So there's two things here. One, three out of every four posts in that group that was not shared by someone Jewish was shared by someone. Whoa, what have I done? Pulled out. There you go was shared by someone who shared hardcore hollow, like anti-Semitic material. But the number is higher on the posts. It means they're more active. The anti-Semites are more active than people who are not anti-Semitic. And this is something that I've seen across the board. The people who are likely to get up on a cold February morning to go to some far off place to take part in a demonstration, to wave a flag or to man a storm, are far more likely to be anti-Semitic than not. The more difficult the activity, the more likely it is, that, because it's motivation. Nothing motivates more than hate. And boy, does hating Jews motivate people. Well, now this shows it as well. This is from an APAC, and this, this came out in a report this morning, um, published 260 pages, I haven't slept for weeks. Um, and what I did here is why well, I took the Jews and the Palestinians out. I said, okay, take the people who are actually, because I, I get it. Okay, I'm not expecting the Palestinians to love the Jews, and I'm not expecting the Palestinians to love the Zionists. Right? So take the Jews and the Palestinians out of the equation. Who's there? Who's tagging along? And as soon as you do this, you're left with 63% of the people who were at this demonstration outside APAC, who were neither Jewish nor Palestinian, shared hardcore anti-Semitic material. But this time, I looked at what type of material they were sharing. And 29% of them, one in every three, white supremacy, neo-Nazi. Not Rothschild conspiracy, not some socialism of fools, not Mossad as ISIS, but these people were sharing white supremacy, neo-Nazi websites. <laughs> now, you probably can't see all that, but everything every I've circled in yellow says, as a Jew. And this is one of the key problems that we have here. And what, what we need to do is understand not understand it, but accept that it's true. Because we don't need to understand something. Something doesn't have to, um, or it doesn't have to make sense. It just has to be true. Now, this is Ariel Gold. Ariel Gold is a key campaigner because she's quite photogenic for uh, 
a group called Code Pink in the US, and they do guerrilla tactics, high profile, out in the open. They'll attack someone. They'll they'll storm into the Senate. TV stuff. Now, she uses her identity all the time. I mean, look at that. As a Jew, I, you know, I, I did actually like search my own. I don't think I've ever used it because I speak as a person. I don't speak as a Jew. If it's, I don't even know what that means. I don't see what it, what it is. I, I, I'm me and I speak. If, if as a Jew means anything, then majority rules. Because you can only tell if, if it means something, then you count the majority. Her opinion as a Jew becomes irrelevant because she's a fringe minority. As a Jew means nothing when she speaks of it. But, Here she's in a group. Now there's this girl called Ariana Love. Ariana Love says, and I do apologise for that. It's time to up our game, folks. I've been called an anti-Semite quite a few times. This is all psychological intimidation. You know, the usual stuff of the anti-Zionist crowd, where she's been accused of anti-Semitism, she's not having any of it, because free speech, we're allowed to attack Israel, and anti-Semitism isn't, you know, anti-Zionism. And here is Ariel Gold. Just a clarification. Someone may say that the point is anti-Semitic without actually calling you anti-Semitic. Now, what she doesn't do, she doesn't ask any details. She doesn't ask what happened, what she said. This is a girl who says she's fighting anti-Semitism, okay? Someone's just come along and said, I'm being called an anti-Semite. It's outrageous. And here she is. Panic. It's all okay. Oi. It's a panic. Oi. Now this is one of our last shares. The International Red Cross report confirms the Holocaust of six million Jews is a hoax. Middle East rising. That's not anti Semitic. So we've got this girl here. Now, understand this connection. She will defend her against me. Won't she? She's in a group with people sharing the Renegade Tribune, White Resistor, Stormfront, Rents, Ike. David Duke, and if I attack her, she'll come at me with, oh no, it's not the same thing. Anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism, they're different. She goes on Fox News. She faces down Fox News, and they're quite hostile to her to make the case. Anywhere she can get TV time, she's out there protecting anti-Semites by blurring the issues. This is another one of Ariana's. I mean, there's no doubt, it's not an accidental share. This is who the woman is. This is just Rothschild conspiracy with, um, you know, all the activities we've ever done, you know, that kind of stuff. And there she is, go on. Jewish Voice for Peace. Now, these are the biggest group in the States, and by far, one of the biggest part of this industry that goes on about, oh, there's, you know, there's no anti-Semitism, it's all a smear, it's all about a con. This is Rabbi David Miverser, he's part of the JVP Rabbinical Council. Okay, it's his Jewish Voice of Peace Rabbinical Council. It doesn't get much more Jewish than this guy. Other Jews and I support BDS, 100%. And I oppose anti-Semitism a hundred percent. Well, let's see if he does, shall we? Now, I don't know what the original share was. This is Eliane Green, who we saw earlier, joining the Labour Party for Jeremy Corbyn and sharing hardcore anti-Semitism. Now, one of the things, because a lot of them share fake news, it's gone within days. I go through these groups looking for historical shares, and they've all gone, these sites don't last long sometimes. I'm not sure exactly what was shared. But 
This is David Middleton. This is our rabbi. There's one, two, three, four, five, six people above him. So seven people in total in this group. Now, Eliana Green, we know she shares anti Semitic stuff, right? So let's have a look at Lara Day. Nazi Zionist collaboration from Rents. Now, Rents is Jeff Rents. Well, again, we're dealing with neo Nazi stuff. This is far right -like neo Nazi. I mean, it's back crazy. Okay? Anyway, and again, another Rents here. So the first person we know shared anti Semitic material, she also does. Right. Next in the list, Joanne, can you get where this is going, don't you? Joanne Carroll. <coughs> Timeline of the Rothschild. The Rothschilds claim they are Jewish when in fact they are Khazars, <laughs> and so on and so forth. The next one in the list, Liza Irwin. I can't see, I mean, it's. This is Paul Eisen. Paul Eisen is a Holocaust denier. New World Order pledge to Jews, and so on and so forth. Next one in the list. This is a neo-Nazi white supremacist website. Synagogue of Satan. Next one in the list. Oh, next one. Jewish rabbi openly admits to Satan worship. Days with Jukes YouTube channel being shut down. Oh, tell us your thought. Hungry kills the lost child back. Okay, this is Matthews, which just leaves Susan. He's ready to made it. Well, we down the M MH17. We are really busy guys. We down the MH17. Um, who controls Hollywood? The, the usual stuff. Go on. These are the people in that group. Shared Mossad Rothschild conspiracy. Shared Holocaust denial websites. Shared neo-Nazi websites. Okay. Other Jews and I support BDS, a hundred percent, and oppose anti-Semitism, a hundred percent. That guy is out there now, telling people that anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism are different. That as a Jew, people should listen to him and not listen to us. Think about that, okay? <laughs> I'm a Zionist. 100% of the Zionists. This guy is sitting now with people who share neo Nazi material, white supremacy stuff from Rents and Stormfront, and all of these, th these websites that we know about, the Renegade Tribune, all of the sites that, that nobody should ever touch. They're his allies. I'm the enemy. Really? I'm his enemy. This, it doesn't have to make sense. We just have to understand that it's true. This is what is happening. This, this one involves you guys. Now, last year, Jewish Boys of Peace, so the rabbi, the good rabbis group, okay, that good rabbi we just saw, first ever, 40 Jewish groups worldwide opposed to equating anti Semitism with criticism of Israel. Well, that to me is like someone waving a flag at me. Someone does that, I'll go, I want to have a look at these 40 groups. I did. I wrote a piece about it. Because <laughs> some of them are absolute nonsense. Um, there's a New Zealand one here that's effectively two girls. In fact, most of them are just like one or two girls. Let's say 40 organisations. That got shared over 60,000 times. That post. Think about it. Sixty. What I would do to get shared sixty thousand times. It's got shared over sixty thousand times. All of the people that this is feeding, because they they, they need it. The anti-Semites need this defence. Without this defence, the anti-Semites can't move. You know, if there was no JDP, if there was no JVL, okay, if there was no Scottish Jews for Zion, if there was none of this, the anti-Semitism crisis wouldn't have lasted five minutes. Because the Jews would have spoken, and the other side would have had to have listened. And that would have been the end of it. But because these guys speak, 
there's an argument. And the anti-Semites get to hide behind this, which is why as soon as these guys post it, it gets shared everywhere. But it's nonsense. All you have to do is scratch the surface. Free speech for Israel in here. So are JVL. Okay? So are Jewish Voice for Labour in here, Jewish Socialist Group are in here, Jews for Justice for Palestinians, and they're all the same group. It's the same seven people. <laughs> it's Mike Bushman, it's Jonathan Rosenhead, it's Naomi Wimborne. We know them, we know their names. We're all first name terms because there are only seven of them. But so 10% uh, of these 40 groups are seven people. There's a group here called Jewish Voice for Peace Members in London, UK, which is really fascinating because it didn't exist until three days before this letter came out. Okay, and when it did start up, the person who started the group and held the first meeting wasn't Jewish, and guess what? He shares hardcore anti-Semitic material. So it's a non-Jew fronting this Jewish Voice for Peace group. And there's another one in here, and it's called Scottish Jews Against Zionism. Now you guys probably know Scottish Jews Against Zionism. <laughs> the Atlanta. This is Jonah from Scottish Jews Against Zionism, interviewed at the protest. Out. She was the first person ever to speak in the name of Scottish Jews Against Zionism. She was interviewed by Mick Napier. Uh, she was introduced by Mick Napier. Now, I know Yolanta because I wrote about her in my report. In fact, I wrote several pages about her in my report because there were lots of anti-Semitic images that I could use. Now, this is Sarah Glynn, a letter from Scottish jazz in today's national. Mm -hmm. okay, this is Sarah Glynn. Now, Sarah Glynn, when I wrote my report attacking <coughs> hardcore anti-Semitism, Sarah Glynn attacked me. She wrote a piece in Bella Caledonia attacking my report. Now, my report only dealt with hardcore anti-Semitism. What was there to attack? But they need the Jewish defence. So she came out and defended them. Now, what's happened here? Look who signed it. Jonah Litwitz. That name only ever appears on letters from jazz. It appears nowhere else. Not on Facebook. It's got no online footprint at all. And guess whose name's missing? Yola Hansik. They've made her name sound more Jewish. So that when they write letters, it sounds like Jewish people are signing the letters. And here she is. This is the face of Scottish Jews against Zionism. Stop with the lies already. Six million Jews, Jews invented racism. Actually, she's liking this one. But Jews, in, you remember us killing Kennedy and knocking the plane out and the two buildings? We invented racism too. Okay, she's liking this. Holocaust in our posts. How? What gets me is that it's allowed to take place. Okay, this is what gets me because it's obvious. Now, I'm the one, I'm, okay, I get it, I'm in there and I'm exposing this stuff. But I put. I don't understand how this is allowed to take place. I know it's true. I know it's real. I don't try to get in their heads. That's not my job. I'm not a psychologist. <coughs> and this is her having a gun with Sarah Glynn attacking me because I wrote a post attacking anti Semites. And this is the industry. This is Mondevice. In the report that I have produced this morning, I used this image. This is a string of Mondavites. Now, Mondavites are in the States, they're run by two Jews, um, deeply anti Semitic. Well, they say anti Israel, okay, let's not call it. They're deeply anti Israel. They have been called anti Semitic, or they've been, at least it's been said that they feed anti Semitic materials. And this is them dealing with the anti Semitic, the anti Semitism crisis. The Jews, again, one after the other. 
perverse use of anti-Semitism, as if we're making it all up. They're standing in front of these people and they're pushing this. And this is what we're dealing with. It is effectively an industry of denial, where we have an alliance between anti-Semites, whether it's conscious or not doesn't matter, but it's an actual alliance between two groups, one that needs allies, which are the Jews, and there's so few of them, they need allies so they have a voice, and the other are the anti-Semites who need someone to give them legitimacy. That's what we're fighting. Thank you.